What's going on? We are live. Welcome to the Beastly Thoughts Show. Well, live. <laughs> okay. uh, we haven't done this in a while, guys. I, you know, I almost don't recognize you, Robbie. You've grown so much, Beastly. You've gotten so old. What happened? What oh, is... <laughs> what's going I'm sorry. on? Guys? I don't know. Robbie, little man jokes. I don't know what you're remembering there, Briar. But I'm actually Robbie. That's Beastly. Oh, oh. You're getting us confused, Briar. I, I can't believe this. It's been that long. <laughs> it's been that long. Oh my god, man. What's up, man? It's been two weeks since we've done the show. I've been actually aching to get in here and do it. When we don't do a show, it just it does something to my weekly routine. Mm-hmm. So I feel like I didn't do something very important, like I forgot to go grocery shopping or didn't change the cat litter for a full week. Yep. Something something bad <laughs> happened. And so I'm really happy to be here so we can solidify. There's a, a lot disturbance of in the forest. Yes, in the forest, for sure. <laughs> and uh, there's been a lot of things going on in, in the video gaming world. We had PSX, we had the Game Awards. It's just been a plethora of news and uh, there's even been new news this week, and I'm really happy to get back with you guys and the viewers. But for December, it feels like there's a lot going on in the gaming world. Usually in December, it's kind of like, you know, all yeah. the big games are out. Uh, yeah, there's a lot right. of marketing for games that are already out, you know, in the push to get them sold for Christmas. Mm-hmm. But it feels like just news is just, like, all over the place, and the gaming world is just getting, like, knocked around. You know, like, boom, 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 news, news, yeah. news. It's mm-hmm. crazy. It's crazy. It's insane. It's crazy. <laughs> So, what have you been playing? Oh, man, I'll start because it's been kind of crazy, all right? Uh, I'll start off with my PSN game. For those of PlayStation Plus, you guys know how valuable this amazing subscription service is. I've been playing Freedom Wars on PlayStation Vita. Our good friends, best friends, Colin and Greg, uh, Colin Moriarty, Greg Miller, have been talking about this game probably for the last year that I've been listening to them. And I never had a chance to play it. I kind of put my Vita to the side i got lots of great games on it, but the, the portable aspect of gaming is something I've gradually had less and less time for, if you guys can understand that. Uh, but it did come to PlayStation Plus this month, and uh, I've been playing it, and I really enjoy it. For the people who don't know what Freedom Wars is, it's a distant, dystopian world where you're born into servitude or slavery, basically. You're born into a prison uh, system where you have a million-year sentence on you. You're stuck in a cell, and you're allowed out to basically do things to help the government and help the the people who are basically free in the world, which are like 1% of the world are actually free. And you, you take out these enemies and save people. And the more you do that, you actually lessen your million-year sentence. But every time you do something that you're not literally supposed to be able to do, like lying down to sleep, if you lie down to sleep at the beginning of the game, you get like 20 extra years. If you pace back and forth in your cell, you get like 10 years talking to people without you know uh, getting that ability to actually speak to people through the system will get you more time. So it's a lot of things going on. You can play with up to eight other people online, seven other people. And uh, my wife and I have been playing. I've been playing with my sons, and uh, I've been really enjoying that. Now when it comes to the console spaces last week, has been dedicated almost entirely to the Uncharted um, 4, a Thief's End multiplayer beta. Uh Yes. I've been putting in a lot of time on that. Um, it's, it's It's a really weird thing. I got a review of it that just went up yesterday. Uh, it's the first multiplayer game that I played that literally made me not want to play The Last of Us. Yes, it's possible. Whoa. Uh, it's, yeah, I, I haven't really been playing The Last of Us. My brother wanted to play last night. I played a couple of games. Uh, but this game is so fun. Everything that I like about The Last of Us somehow exists here, but it's much more fast-paced. It's more of an arcade type of uh, experience, but it's extremely deep. Uh, the things that you're able to do, uh, you know, traversing the, the multiplayer maps, you're able to swing, you know, you're able to land on people. You can bring out non-player characters to help you and help your teammates that walk around like tanks with giant machine guns. There's non-player characters that can run around and grab the enemy and hold them for you while you shoot them. You can, you, you can be downed. And your your teammates can uh, you know resurrect you the same way you can in The Last of Us. It's really fast paced. You can throw these totems throughout the map. Like you get a certain amount of skill points, you can grab a totem and throw it out there, and that totem will land around the enemies and start shooting off fireballs and take them all out. It's so much going on. The game looks amazing. The character models look amazing. I've uh, just really really been enjoying that game. The multiplayer beta ends today. Yeah. <laughs> Which is sad because we're doing the show right now. <laughs> I, I really, really have been enjoying uh, the Uncharted 4 beta, man. It's amazing. I cannot wait to play it. I even said it in my review. I don't know what I'm more excited to play, the single player or the multiplayer, because you get two maps, and the the map design is so great, and it, it just complements the play style. 
It's fast paced. You're jumping over ledges. You can hang from a, like a cliff. And if someone walks over there and looks to try to find where you are, you can reach up and grab them and throw them off and kill them the same way you can in a single player game. That's cool. It's so many things that go on in this game. There's uh, one hit downs. You can run around with like this hook, you know, the hook that you grapple with. You can swing it around, run up to somebody, hit them with it. They're down, one hit. Just a lot of different things that go into this game. It's ex- incredibly deep, but on the surface, it doesn't appear to be. A- am I right there, Robbie? When you see the game, it just looks like you're running around in third person. You shoot people, you run up to them and kick them. But once you play the game and you understand what's really going on in the game, uh, there's so many aspects to how you can win. Uh, there's so many. The non-player characters that they've added to this game really don't seem to break the, the experience at all. It just makes it so much more smooth. Uh, I love it. I really, really love it. I've been having a lot of fun with that. I played a little bit of uh, a little bit of Fallout 4, maybe about an hour all week, which is kind of sad. Played some Black Ops 3 in my life this week. Uh, I played some... Um, Fallout 4, are you, are you just not enjoying it anymore? Are you no, just no, too no, busy no. for it? What's, what's no, going on? Uh, well, this, this is my... And it may be my final thought on it up until you know up until now. Uh, it's great. I love it. It's Fallout Three. That's how I feel. It is, it. man. It is so it's, fall. I, I said too. I'm like, all they have to do is release Fallout Three again, and I yeah, play it. It's, it's but now, I, like, I was totally wrong. I totally disappointed. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's, it's it's Fallout Three. Uh, it didn't break you know any barriers from Fallout Three. Of course, the game looks better. There's a lot more content, but when it comes to the way that you feel when you're in that world playing it, it's very similar to Fallout Three. And I got pretty much the same desire to play it and beat it that I did Fallout. I played Fallout Three, beat Fallout Three, but I took my time to do it, and I feel the same way about Fallout Four. It's just been a really rough week. I bought 27 games this year. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a I lot bought, of games. I bought I, that video is coming up this week. I already did it. It's going. Sorry, little out. beastly. No college for you. Yeah, he's damn right. <laughs> you better get some good grades because you're going to need a scholarship. <laughs> you're damn right. I bought, I bought 27 games this year, guys. And, and, and the reason I, I tallied them up, I had to go through and look at my Xbox One, my Wii U stuff, and my PS4 stuff. And uh, out of the 27, I was only able to com- complete. How many would you guys guess? How many games did I complete 100%? 15. 15. Two. That's a huge disparage. disparage between the two, Fifteen and two, somewhere in, in between. I completed four games. Four oh, games. Wow, yeah. Robbie definitely got the uh, prices right on that one. <laughs> Cha-ching! <laughs> Show yeah. was behind door number two. Yeah, I, I beat four games, and I was really disappointed in that. But at the same time, I really wasn't. I uh, I beat Dying Light, Bloodborne, The Order, eighteen eighty six, and um, I'm trying to remember the last one. Those are three. But I beat four games, and um, I had to do my game of the year based on these games mm-hmm. because I didn't complete uh, The Witcher 3. I didn't complete Batman Arkham Knight. I haven't even played Arkham Knight once. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's so many games that, that I got this year, and I, it kind of became this situation where I started playing a great game, and then something else comes out. And so I'm like, I want to at least try that yeah. because I heard so much about it. This game is awesome. I have this game now. I'm going to go buy this game and see how much I like it. I buy that game. I like it. I'm like, ooh, this is fucking awesome too. And as soon as I start playing that one, there's another one that's getting ready to come out. And so I'm like, i got to grab that one. Just i got to see what it's like. And this has been a reoccurring situation throughout the year, other than the few times that I've actually sat down, put time aside, and said, I'm going to beat this game. I'm, oh, and the, the last game was um, Until Dawn. And that was one of the later games I bought in the year. But that is more too. It came out at a time where there wasn't a whole lot Mark. of other stuff coming out, so it was like it was easier. Like I feel like a lot of people devoted a lot of time to that game. I put uh, 70, then, 72 come, hours into it. Yeah, come spring, all of a sudden things just started coming out so fast. It was hard to keep up. It's like right now. I want to. I want to uh, buy the Star Wars Battlefront. I want to buy it because I had a lot of fun with it. Right. Yeah. But at the same time, I still want to play Black Ops 3. I still want to play Rise of the Tomb Raider. I still want to play Halo 5. So it's like all these games, whatever I buy, I'm basically screwing myself. I was just in the living room talking to my wife. I said, babe, I want you to help me. I feel like a drug addict, and I need you to be my counselor. (laughs) Which of these games should I stick with until I'm done with it, just so I can get through them and actually put them to the side and say, God damn it, you're done. Because My name is Beastly, and I'm addicted to games. Yes, I am. <laughs> addicted to not beating them, too. I just buy them. But, yeah, that's what I've been doing all week. Um, I had a great week playing the Uncharted 4 beta. I'm sorry I kind of went sideways there and talked a little that's bit fine. too much about other things. But the game is awesome. I'm super excited about it. I'm really, really excited to see what they're going to do with the single player, especially with Neil Druckmann and Bruce Shraley, uh helming that. But from what I've seen in the multiplayer, it's going to be phenomenal. 
phenomenal. I, I like it when you guys inject a little bit of personality. I like when you kind of talk about, you know, you know, other stuff than just the news. Things are going I, I on. It's, it's interesting to me. I think it's probably interesting to other people too. Well, well, thank you. I do appreciate that, sir. All right, Robbie. I don't. I don't want to know what you've been playing. We're gonna move on. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'll just Robbie, leave the what show have you been there. playing, buddy? I'm useless. What right. have you been playing? <laughs> so this week, just like uh, my friend Beastly Gamer, I've been playing a lot of the Uncharted Four multiplayer. So uh-huh. here's the thing: I did not like Uncharted Two and Three multiplayer. I I played it. I was like, this is fine. It's not for me. I thought it was a great multiplayer. Couldn't get into it. Uncharted Four, on the other hand, is a lot of fun. I mm-hmm. completely agree with Beastly. It's very balanced. It's fun. It's fast and I've just been getting into it, especially since it's 60 frames per second. The multiplayer feels so smooth. I absolutely love it. <clears throat> I've also been playing uh, Star Wars Battlefront as well because it's a fun game, but I think I've expressed my problems in the past, and that game is just lacking content. Like, it's a great core game, but unfortunately it just doesn't have the content there to sustain itself as a $60 purchase. Yeah. But then I have been playing something that I was very excited about this week. I got early special access to the Division Multiplayer nope, Alpha. No, you can't talk about it. What? It's on NDA, my friend. You cannot talk about that. I'm pretty sure... Well, nope. I know I can't nope. share footage of it, but can nope. I talk about it? I thought you I could. can't talk about it. I'm sorry. I I hear you for your pain, but to, when you <laughs> signed the release for that, when you when you signed up for that, you, you agreed to an NDA. To be so, honest, I think you're right. I just remember I that right. I couldn't share footage of that. <laughs> I was a little nervous to talk about it. I want to so badly. I really do, but I won't take a chance. We will talk about it. I guarantee well, it. The day, the day will come. Uh, that's exciting news. Yeah, yeah, I got to play that. Just to know that that's what I'll say. Closed alpha is exciting news, but yeah. you're going to honor, honor that agreement. But you I can't do. I respect everybody. Ubisoft. I got the email from them. I'm not allowed to share gameplay, and I also saw something about I'm not allowed to really disclose information about it, so I right. guess you know, that means I'm not allowed to talk about it. That. I really want to. I'm but sorry. I'm I sorry to put the kibosh on you, Robbie. I I really want to talk about it too, but there, it is in there. I'm glad <laughs> you did, though, Briar, because I don't want to. Yeah, take a risk. I'd yeah. love to discuss it, though. And more importantly than that, Robbie, you don't want to take a risk on Briar's channel. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, I don't want to give you a copyright strike or anything. So glad you cut me off there. Um, okay, uh, so so keep tell us about I'm Charted Four again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. Um, so <laughs> the game is awesome. Let We're me tell awesome you everything right I just told you about. Yeah, it. basically the game is great. I did not expect to like it, and uh, I'm excited for the multiplayer. I went out and pre-ordered the game as soon as I played the beta. I was like, this is awesome. Yeah, I've never I'm been so a fan old. of their multiplayer before. I'm, 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 I haven't played the beta. I'm, I'm glad you guys are excited about it because you know I really so, like the single player of those games, but the multiplayer never really got me excited. So to get a more complete package out of a sixty dollar game, that's really exciting. Well, the thing is, right, I know you don't like The Last of Us, but in The Last of Us community, everyone's consensus is this is a much better game than The Last of Us multiplayer. So there's no bitch bombs? No, there are not. No. Good. Yeah, you'll like it. <laughs> there you go. How so unfortunate weird. there's no bitch bombs. <laughs> but well, it, so that story about your uh, kicking the streamer off? Yeah, guys, I was uh, playing The Last of Us earlier in the week. I had uh, four Twitch players on there with me, some friends of mine. And uh, I have this thing, if you guys have seen my gameplay, where I drop a bomb directly inside of one of the supply boxes. And it's really hard to see it. You've got to have a keen eye. You've got to be looking for the residual little bit of smoke. And a lot of people don't. They just run up to it. And uh, after about the third time that one of these Twitch players got caught with it, all I heard was some expletives uh, you know, coming through my headset, uh, a lot of anger and frustration, and then a rage quit. And so then, when we- Beastly first got into this game, he got me and Robbie to play with him. And, you know, he was really talking up a good game. He's like, this game is really fun. You're going to enjoy it. I, I run into that game. You know, I, I'm, you know, I wasn't thrilled with the controls, but I was starting to get a hang of it. But every time I'd go up to something, he would hide a fucking bomb in it. It was the most annoying goddamn thing. And I'm coming from, like, Call of Duty world, right, where I'm playing a lot of Call of Duty, and, like, the biggest complaint in the community is all these po- people putting, like, IEDs and shit all over the place. Where, you know, you just run around and all of a sudden you blow up. Like, it, it so turned me off of this game, the way that Beastly specifically played it, that I have never turned it back on again. <laughs> yeah. Beastly ruined it. It is the, the cheesiest, without a doubt. I mean, I've, I've seen some cheesy ways to play video games in my day, and I've used them. You know, uh, you know, the, you know Laying down in Call of Duty and shooting people, I, I, I am, I do that all the time, and I laugh while I'm doing it. 
And but you know this, I hate that. Man, this, <laughs> without a doubt, is the worst. The <laughs> worst. <laughs> We, we started calling it bitch fun. Bitch I was fun. so angry, I turned off my PS4 and I didn't talk to pieces for a week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, oh it's my such, god. Such, such fun. I remember fun that. Movies. That was amazing. You guys, you guys were there. You remember this. Yeah, it I, was, am it not was a... I am not exaggerating this story. <laughs> <laughs> no, he is not. And, and over the last year or so, guys, I've had regret. You know, I've been feeling hard. Damn it, maybe I shouldn't have went so hard on Briar. <laughs> what do you think? He might have came around, you know, came around one day and really liked the game, but I think that the proverbial bitch bomb ended his It was the most annoying thing I've ever seen in a video game, and then to see that this is like a valid tactic, like people are like, are okay with this in the community? Oh, fuck that. I don't even want to be a part of that community. It's and then, you like bitch bombs in the two and then later I heard that they introduced a bow and arrow that was a one-shot kill, and you had to buy it. Yeah. So yeah, like, yeah. Oh my god, what a poisonous community. I'm out of here. Well, <laughs> <laughs> to, to, to be clear, to be clear, to actually drop the bomb inside the box does take a lot of practice, and, and mm -hmm. for the so most you part, practice I, to be such an asshole. Yes, yeah, it takes. <laughs> hard, it takes a sort of dick. <laughs> you think I was born this fucked up? No. <laughs> He knows it takes skill to be a total. I'm asshole. gonna call your parents. I'm gonna have a long talk with them. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I don't know what you did to this kid, man. <laughs> something I want to ask you guys about, right? This is not to do with the last of us at all. It's to do with Black Ops Three. Have either of you guys played Black Ops Three? In the last, in the last week? week, no. Robbie, uh, I think the last two weeks I have is just because the time of that game was so poor. Like, well, not necessarily because Fallout Four came out like four days later. Let, 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 let me let me say this, and it might kind of put a curve on that, that comment there, Robbie. Last month, Black Ops Three, Black Ops Three was the number one selling. Uh, Game, yeah. Period. NPD, yeah, NPD numbers. Uh, it outsold Fallout 4, and they have speculated it has already outsold Advanced Warfare in total numbers. Oh, that doesn't surprise me at all. So they're saying that this could be the return to form for Call of Duty, and uh, it makes me want to play more of it. I mean, I, I think, think it's, it's a great game, game but honestly, I'm game. just burnt on Call of Duty. Like, I like it a lot. I enjoyed it when it was first out, but I think I'm just tired of Call of Duty. I really am. The There's stuff I enjoyed games. about Call of Duty, that series has kind of moved on from. Mm. You know, yeah. you know that's that's just how it is. They've kind of evolved, I, I, and I understand. Yeah. That. But it's I can't really say I'm done with Call of Duty uh, because I'll be almost like saying I'm done with first person shooters. Mm -hmm. When it comes to first person shooters, Call of Duty is one of the best at it. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. And, yeah. And, and throughout his, and throughout history, that's been you know something they've been paramount in is first person shooting. And uh, maybe the name Call of Duty might turn people off, but I think Black Ops 3 did it really, really well. Uh, yeah. Some of the other titles, not, maybe not so much. And I agree with Briar. I would love to see an, an older school Call of Duty made it with, you know, with modern hardware. I would love to see... I don't know if I, they can make that game anymore, though. Like, it would seem slow. It would seem ponderous. It seemed, yeah, it would. It, like, I, it, I used to like that realistic military arcade feel. You know, I like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and what we get now is it's more of a sci-fi kind of thing, and you know I get that in another place. Yeah. To be honest with you, especially since the I, movement I do. has changed too. Yeah, Black Ops Three, the movement is amazing. The graphics are really good. The engine runs very smoothly. I mean, they did a great job with the game. It's just you know my my taste have moved on. It's not. I'm, you're, you're I'm just, not complaining you know, about the game. I got you. Yeah. I got you. I so uh, now, now that uh, two of the hurdles have been jumped, Mr. Rabbit, why don't you tell us what you've been playing all week? I've been fucking racing sparrows around Mars and Venus. <laughs> 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 so, I'm sure you guys saw PSX, right? You guys watched it. You saw the Destiny announcement at the end. Everybody thought it was good. Well, everybody in the Destiny community thought it was going to be, you know, DLC. So, yeah, that's what we thought. And when we saw that it was sparrow racing, there was a pretty huge amount of disappointment in the community. It was surprising, uh, though. No, no doubt about that. Definitely. It was very surprising. Uh, once we got it in our hands, though, I think that most people would agree it's pretty fun. Uh, there's still some bitterness, I think, uh, overall. You know, we didn't buy a, a racing game. We bought a first-person shooter. It's only got two levels. You know, you can only race sparrows. It's, you know, it's it's a pretty featureless racing mode. <laughs> They're testing the waters to see if this is a real event because it's a limited time, too, and I yeah. think... I think yeah. it's awesome that they're trying something new. It is pretty really fun. I'll be honest with you. It's pretty fun to compete in. You can bring in six people, uh, so you can just race with your friends, no randoms in there at all, which I really enjoy. That actually adds, like, you, your raid team can go sparrow racing. You know, that's that's a lot of fun. Uh, it's the only 
uh, Crucible event right now where you can bring in six people of your own and just have it's like a custom match basically. Uh, and I've actually been having a lot of fun with it. I've been playing a ton of Trials of Osiris this weekend, which is you know the the more competitive three versus three multiplayer mode, and I am loving it. They introduced a whole bunch of new guns uh, to Destiny. Well, they reintroduced some old guns and brought in some. Uh, new armor and stuff like that, and that's been really fun testing all that stuff out. They updated the game to 2.1, so like the weapon balancing has all changed, which has been really fun. I think it's the best version of weapon balancing they've yet had in Destiny. You, I feel like you can use any type of weapon and be successful in Trials of Osiris, which is like kind of the upper echelon of competitiveness inside of Destiny. I think they're on the right track. I'll be honest with you. I just want to know when the next DLC is coming out. Yeah. We have some news about that, so we'll uh, get yeah. into it later. All right, guys. So, so that's what I've been playing. Yeah, go ahead, Beasley. Well, I saw my wife playing uh, the Sparrow Racing actually, and she really appeared to enjoy it. Uh, and I was really, I was shocked at the fact that you actually get all this gear just from racing. You get a ton of gear, yeah. and you can use those three of coins during uh, Sparrow races, and you can get exotics. Oh wow. Yeah, so you figure, you know, five to six minutes a race, including, like, the load times, maybe it's seven minutes, and you, you do, you know, a bunch of races in a row, you can, you can rack up a fair amount of exotics. In fact, I got, like, nine of them over the weekend. Damn, how many hours you put in this weekend, brother? Uh, not that much. I mean, I played a little bit on Friday. I played a lot on Saturday and played a lot this morning. Uh, but, you know, it's fun. It's a fun little – it's a diversion, but it's fun. Well, see, the thing is, when you said the community, which I understand, people want a game to be what it's supposed to be, a first-person shooter. I actually like the fact that this is a, more of a social gathering than anything mm-hmm. else. It's something so different that people who are tired of the monotony of doing the same thing over and over again, you know, there's so there's only so many things you can do, which, of course, now, there's a lot more things you can do than what you could have done, you yeah. know, a year ago. But I, I really like the fact that they're adding something completely new. I like to see little other sports type of events being put in there. You know, just... Destiny football. Uh, yeah, I mean, imagine, you know, ice ice hockey. I mean, just crazy things that will make... <laughs> ice, all right. Well, okay. Yeah, star hockey. <laughs> Do it in face. You know, just something different uh, that nobody else is doing that really makes the game. It's multifaceted, and it's becoming more and more multifaceted. I like yeah. that. I, I remember when we were first starting in this game, uh, running around the tower with a little ball, and we always talked about other things they could do to make this more of a social type of gathering. Guardian game. volleyball? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everybody wearing bikinis like, uh, you know, Dead or Alive. Dead or awesome. alive. <laughs> yes. Just, just a helmet Jeez. with bikini. Yes. <laughs> awesome. We're off the rails, but... Yeah. That's, okay. that's all right. That's where we belong. <laughs> <laughs> it's our place. That's where, yeah, that's where we call home. Yeah. I, I don't know. I really like it. it I, you know, at first I was pretty negative about the whole experience, and... Uh, somebody actually called me out in my comments saying, you know, you're, you're only pissed that there's no DLC because you got nothing to talk about in your YouTube videos. I was like, oh, no, I'm pissed because, uh, you know, I have a lot of friends who play Destiny and they drift away when there's no new content and I miss them and I want them to come back. Absolutely. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And now that's something else I've been hearing that a lot of people are migrating away from it. I don't think it's because of the game is de- degrading at all. I think it's just so much other things going on. There's so much on. shit out right now. It's crazy. Yeah. And actually, I'll tell you what. This week, I started seeing a lot of people coming back already, which is surprising to me. Maybe it was Sparrow Racing. Maybe it was like a little bit of burnout with Black Ops and Fallout and Tomb Raider, you know. Uh, but people are coming back already to Destiny. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's a different. social experience, though. It's it's different than those other games. Yeah. I, the thing is, and it's weird, it's like the only game I can say that about, you know, besides The Last of Us, which I love for – we won't speak – as to why I love the game. Uh, Destiny, for some reason, it pulls you back no matter what, no matter what you're doing. If you like Destiny when it was first released, whenever a new DLC comes out, it's almost like a new game. Everybody yeah. comes back. Most games, they get a DLC. It's a small denomination of people who play the original will come back and play it. You know, like Dying Light, Bloodborne. Those games are amazing, right? But not everybody who played Dying Light and Bloodborne are going to get back into the DLC. Right. A huge majority of people who play Destiny are going to be playing the DLC every time one drops. And to me, that's really phenomenal. It, it speaks volumes about what the, the game is as a social experiment in general. Yeah, we'll just have to wait and see if there's actually DLC in year two. Yeah, yeah. All right, uh, so... You guys want to do some news? Sure, Robbie, yes. why don't you get us started since you compiled all this fantastic news, sir. So the first story we have here is about Battlefront, and it's kind of what I uh, went to earlier is that 
Battlefront may not have the depth that a lot of gamers are looking for in a multiplayer-only game, especially when you don't have a campaign. So EA kind of had some thoughts to say on this. And what they said is that... Yeah, so this is what they had to say. Star Wars Battlefront is a first-person shooter, but it is one of the only team-rated first-person shooters. We had designed it to be a much more accessible product to a wide age group. So a twenty, so say like an 8-year-old can play with his father on the couch, as well as a teenager or a 20-year-old can play the game and enjoy it. It is more accessible. And for the hardcore, it may not have the depth that they wanted in the game. So basically, this is kind of you know a, a game that we'll play game. a couple hours. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a casual game, and that's something that we mentioned during the beta. Brian, I remember I asked you this question, and I, I was referring to the aspect that you don't have to really be good to get a particular drop. Luke Skywalker, right. Darth Vader, you Darth Vader. You walk around, you just basically stand inside of a hologram, and you get whatever awesome goodies inside of it. That's incredibly casual. It doesn't speak to the hardcore at all, and basically that's what they're saying there. You can be an eight-year-old and have as much fun as a twenty-year-old playing this game, and they just want everybody to have the same range of fun. It doesn't mean that you're better if you get Darth Vader. It means right. you're in the right spot on the map. You know, if yep. you get to, to to fly a ship or get inside of a walker, it's because you were in the right spot on the map. And for the hardcore, that'd be disappointing. Um, but for what this game is so far, I think it's pretty decent. Now they have an opportunity to take this engine, I think, and make a really deep hardcore game in the same uh, universe. I mean, I think one of the best things about Battlefront, yeah, absolutely, is that you can get in, it's easy to understand. I mean, it's Star Wars, you can live out the fantasy of playing a Star Wars film, and it feels amazing, but one of my main disappointments with the game is that there's not enough depth there, there's not enough content, because in the long run, this game doesn't really have that sustainability, especially when, as a $60 package, it feels incomplete. I mean, even if it's four there. maps. Yeah, and the problem is because then they have this season pass they expect you to buy, and it's basically twice yeah. buying another game. Yeah, 110 dollars so. if you want to invest. If they wanted to add more depth to the game, they could have started by giving Princess Leia the Jab of the Hut outfit. That would have fueled a lot more purchases. Sign me up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would have picked her every single time. <laughs> and she would have just been standing there just picking up stuff. With like six <laughs> dudes circled around her. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. All, right. All right, so Gone Home is coming to PlayStation 4 and Xbox One on January 12th. I've never played this game. I've heard the name quite a bit. Maybe you guys can elaborate for me and possibly the other viewers who don't know what the hell Gone Home is. I've never played it either, but I have heard nothing but good things about it. It's a narrative-driven experience. It takes place in this house. I believe it's investigating a murder or something like that. Like The game looks wonderful, but I've never had a chance to play it, so I'm excited about this, definitely. Well, I'm always happy uh, to get more options on my consoles, guys, so mm-hmm. it's a it's a win-win. All right, continuing on, George Lucas uh, has seen Star Wars The Force Awakens and says fans will, quote, love it, end quote. Uh, there's no Jar Jar Binks. How could he say that? <laughs> How could he say that? Um, I, I don't doubt that I'm going to love it, uh, and, and part of the reason I think I'm going to love it is because he has nothing to do with it. No disrespect <laughs> to Lucas. Uh, the original tr- three f- films were phenomenal. But I think that he may have been doing some kind of drug or something because when you see the prequels he made, it was a completely different person, a completely yeah. different idea. It, it had yeah. nothing to do with the original. Every person that, or character that we love from the original trilogy was basically shat on. Uh, and and uh, I'm really excited about this. this tra- the trailers that they keep revealing, each one makes me just, ah, I, I just want to be in the theater. And a lot of these theaters are sold out until 2016 already. That's incredible. <sighs> I mean, that's I'm just on trailer thinking. lockdown here. I won't even watch a trailer for it. I want to just go in. Fresh. I wish I wish I didn't. Right? I saw the the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles trailer. I was disappointed by that because it looked like a Disney Pixar movie. You know, you got Bebop and Rocksteady from the old school, Briar. You know who they are. Oh, I know Bebop. Yeah, and Ro- you don't know Rocksteady, man. Rocksteady's my brother. <laughs> that's your brother too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, so they've come back, right? But it looks so animated and CG that mm. it's just it's Michael Bay. You know what they should does. do? A live action Ninja Thank Turtles you. movie. Thank you. You know you. what I'm saying? Like, I, I think this Hold would on. be a big hit. Field goal right here, sir. <laughs> that, that, um, to me, that would make a lot of sense to me. I'm just really tired of the CG Turtles and the you know the over accentuation of uh, features and, and expressions. And then when you see Bebop and Rocksteady, it almost looks like a, a Pixar movie. And I was like, it's fan service. They got the turtle van in there. They got the turtle van? He shoots the, the sewer lids and everything. Brian's like, oh, shit, I got to go see this. Uh, I love me some turtles when I was a kid. Me too, man, me too. 
But it's really it's a fan service type of film, but it's so much CG that it kind of turned me off. I wish I hadn't seen it. I also mm-hmm. wish I didn't see the, the Batman vs. Superman, the last trailer. Oh, yeah, me too. I saw that, too. I was like, oh, are you kidding me? How are you going to show this? Tell the whole movie. Yeah. You know, in the trailer. Was, I wish they, I wish yeah. they hadn't done that. Kind but Star did. Wars, back to what this uh, part of our story is, Star Wars hasn't done that yet. Every time they show you something That's in good. Star Wars, it's just another big-ass question mark that pops up in front of your face. You're like, what is going on? Oh, my God, I want to see it. So that's the most hyped movie I've seen in a long time. Yeah. Uh, and I told you guys earlier in the year, that's going to be the biggest movie of all time. Oh, yeah. No I think it will absolutely be one of the best-selling films of all time. I mean, it's Star Wars. There is no other franchise out there that has this kind of legacy with this many generations of people. Do you guys think this movie can live up to the hype? Like, will this be the proper Star Wars film we've wanted? Because there's definitely a lot of pressure to deliver here. This is an important movie to a lot of people. I mean, I almost tear up watching those trailers because they look so good. The promise is there, well, and I'm excited. But... Uh, hey, to be honest with you, if you go back and watch the original series, it's good. Or the, not the original series, the original three movies. They're good, but you they're, know, not, they're, they're not that good. Yeah, they, well, they hit a lot of people at the right time in their lives, you know, like mm-hmm. young people who wanted to. Like, it was really exciting, you know, like, and like. And it was it's something totally so kind of, Like, you can be the hero kind of thing, you know, an average joke saves the universe kind of thing. And the force was really exciting. If they could tap into that, they could definitely make a whole new generation of fans. Absolutely. You know? But yeah, I will absolutely. tell you that a lot of young people, a lot of people who are growing up now, think that the the newer they're, movies are better than the older ones. Oh, they're God. ridiculous. And, they're and that's, so what happens wrong. When, that's what happens when parents aren't raising their damn kids right. That's and, right, Beastly. That's right. You tell I'm them. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> if your kids, like, if your kids <laughs> like the fucking Phantom Menace more than Return You're of the Jedi. You're fucking it up. You're fucking it up. Now I gotta ask you what you're feeding your kids too. Yeah, you're raising like little insane people, little are they psychopaths. Are sleeping outside or something? <laughs> people are insane. But uh, Robbie, Robbie, to answer your question, my thoughts on uh, the new Star Wars film are this: if they can capture the atmosphere of the original films, the atmosphere, the, the world, wonder, the mystery, yeah, the, the mystery know, the, of what the Force was, cowboy thing, you know, you know, the it's, personality. It's, you know, the the originals had personality. Yes. Han Solo was awesome. The man, yeah. You know, Chewbacca was awesome. There was a lot of character to those. Lando people. Calrissian was the man too. Yeah, he, he like was. he like trim as much as the next man. Yes, he did. <laughs> he was eyeballing Leia like crazy. Every time he, he just looked down like she had a big money sign on her underwear. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Yeah. He's come on, man. It's the only black dude in space. You think he ain't gonna be getting trimmed? <laughs> come on. All right. <laughs> so if they're able to capture that environment, if they're able to capture that spirit, that essence of the original three films, and somehow transcend that and bring it to a new age, because it was more the, – the original Star Wars films were more about destiny. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was something that was destined to happen, bringing balance to the Force. Not the game, Briar. The, the 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 he got excited either way. Destiny. The, yeah. <laughs> what? Star, Destiny Star Wars. Um, yeah, but um, if they're able to somehow bring that to the the new generation of people, instead of going back the way they did with the prequels and kind of making it just about the Anakin story and about this ridiculous love story that nobody believed in, uh, you know, and just make it about Star Wars, about the Force, about the Force actually awakening, and about Luke Skywalker turning to the dark side because that's what I believe is going to happen. It's, it, you can't lose there. I'm I mean, hanging it, up on you right now. Listen, look, 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 at Mark, look at Mark Hamill, right? Mark Hamill loves playing bad guys. One of the best villains of all time is the Joker. He is that. When you look at him now, the, he was out there, you know, during a conference talking about it. And he was doing, you know, the Joker voice. The guy's evil at heart now. He's already turned. <laughs> Gourmet okay? Summer turned that motherfucker. Yes. <laughs> and so, also, and so, if you don't know what Corvette Summer is. Yeah, Look it up. <laughs> Look I'll it have up. to do that, Briar. Okay. You definitely do, Robbie. Yeah, so I think that he's the perfect bad guy. I think that he could be the the, the new emperor type. When you look at the parallels between uh, Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader during the process of the original three films, losing a hand, becoming more mechanical, I think it's a good possibility. Plus, we haven't seen him in any trailers. He's not on. He's not on the poster for a reason because obviously the way he looks now is going to let everybody know something's off. So. Yeah. I think that Luke, I think I think this is definitely going to live up to the hype. I'm super excited about it. I think this could be an amazing movie, and having every like all the original cast back is just so much fan service. Like that's incredible. I can't wait to bring my boys because this will be the first time I get to bring my boys to a Star Wars movie. Oh, man. And, like I can't wait to share that experience oh, with them. Man. Like all excited, oh, you know? Yeah, really I, I remember that, man. God, I remember that. 
what a good time it's going to be for you guys. Yeah, All right, so Cyberspunk, Cyberspunk, I'm sorry. That's not <laughs> that is completely That's not different. That is completely different. You, you don't want to get any of that on you. You can find that on <laughs> Pornhub.com. Cyberpunk 2077 is reportedly targeting a fall 2016 release window. Now, this- Cyberpunk. Go ahead, Ryan. It's the next game from CD Projekt Red, the yep. team who made The Witcher 3, that one game of the year. And it's surprising because the reason this is news, because they said they won't even talk about this game until 2017. Like, their full focus right now is working on this game. That's what they're doing right now is working on Cyberpunk. The fact that all of a sudden they're coming out and saying, hey, we're, gonna, we're targeting fall 2016, that's really shocking to me because that's a quick turnout in a year and a half to make a game like that. Wow. Well, I mean, the fact that CD Projekt Red is building it, and we see the world, the characters, and, and, and basically the lore they created with The Witcher, it's going to be phenomenal. I mean, the, all three Witcher games have been amazing. I never played the first two because I wasn't a PC or, or at that time, Xbox 360 kind of guy. Um, but The Witcher 3, from the time that I played it, which I've got to take a step back because I bought 27 games and Witcher 3 is one, and actually fucking finished the game. Um, but... I, I, I'm definitely looking forward to see whatever they're doing now because usually when you have a company like Rockstar, other companies that make amazing games that are centered around a particular IP, when they try something new, it's a huge breath of fresh air. Like when we see what's going on with um, Killzone developer, God, I'm trying to think of the name. And you guys know what I'm talking about, uh, the new game that they're they're bringing uh, Horizon like Zero Dawn. Yeah, yeah. It is Gorilla. 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 Horizon Zero Dawn is so different from the Killzone series. Yeah, that looks and, cool. That game looks really cool. Yeah, That's a yeah. huge step up for that studio. Like, that game has a lot of promise. I am yeah. so excited for that game. So, so when you do something for a long time, you have... I heard it feels I... like Destiny in mud. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> That's it's a, No. <laughs> but, but that was always my complaint about the... Uh, the original Kill Zones. Kill the Kill Zones, Zones. it felt rough, like Halo yeah. in mud. It was Sluggish. Yeah. You felt heavy as hell. It was like playing uh, Elder Scrolls with guns. Because they're over encumbered. Yeah, you're, you couldn't <laughs> walk super slow. But usually, when you're working on a project for a long time, ideas fester in your mind that you know are not going to work with this world. So you sit them to the side, you shelve them until the, a, a, a better opportunity to really flesh them out. And these ideas sometimes turn into amazing things. And I'm super excited for whatever CD Projekt Red's doing next. Absolutely. All right, so uh, one of you gentlemen like to continue? Uh, you Sony like to has the most successful Black Friday in company history. That's a long company history. Think about it for just a second. Damn. You've seen the release of Black PlayStation 2, which was a monstrous success. The no. original PlayStation. The PlayStation 3. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big news. I mean, people are on board with these new consoles, you know? And I, I know that, you know, Sony fanboys are going to take this and run with it saying, you know, that Sony's beaten Microsoft. But both consoles are selling really well. And that's awesome for all gamers. Like, it is a really exciting time to be a gamer. And people are adopting these consoles, and that means more people are going to develop for them because as that base gets bigger, there's more money to be made, so you can make bigger and bigger things for it. That's huge. It's great news. Yeah, yeah. uh, uh, NPD numbers came out, and I believe the hardware sales for the PS4 as of Black Friday were 31 million. And and Xbox One was around 17.5. And Xbox One sales are stupendous compared to last-gen consoles. So, I mean, they're both doing amazing. Uh, they both got great games, and uh, hooray for Sony. You know, uh, they had a really rough beginning of the PS3 era, and they learned from it, and things have been turning around for them. They got a, a great uh, system, got some great hardware, not so much in the triple, I mean, the AAA exclusives department, but uh, it's selling like hotcakes, and uh, good for them. Yeah, it is good. It's, a, it's good news for all gamers, not just people who own the PlayStation 4, but all gamers. Absolutely. 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 I mean, that's something that I agree with wholeheartedly. Uh, I, I love my PlayStation 4, but I love my Xbox One too, man. So it's good It's good for us all. And I lost my place here. Okay. Bungie has confirmed Destiny will be supported by free updates and events rather than price DLC expansions. And this is what you said a long time ago, Mr. Rabbit. You said this would be the best way for them to go. This is a complicated issue. I could talk about this for an hour. That's I'll be you. honest with you, and we don't have that kind of time here. <laughs> I'm going to, if you want to talk about this more, I've got videos on my channel about it. I talk, I did the Planet Destiny podcast. Shameless plugs, Briar. We talked about it for two hours and twenty minutes. Damn. Okay. This, so this, this is a big issue. I will say this: 
when they release DLC like The Dark Below and like House of Wolves, it splits the community up in pieces. There's the have, haves and the haves nots. In the future, with this new model, what it does is it lets everybody play the new content, whether you have money right now or you don't. If you own the Taken King, until Destiny 2 comes out, it looks like you're going to be able to play everything. The awesome. difference will be that you may not get everything. You may not get the rewards, the premium you know, gear. That stuff you may have to pay for, emotes, stuff like that. You may have to pay for that stuff piece by piece. Now, it's a different you a model. Question. There's benefits and drawbacks to both sides of it, and it's a complicated issue. Let me ask you a question. So this hasn't been ironed out, uh, apparently, but what you're saying is with this new model, every new piece of DLC is coming to let's say the Taken King, you're going to get it for free, but you're not going to be able to get maybe certain types of gear and weapons. Are you going to have to pay for them individually per piece, or are you paying for the opportunity to possibly get those pieces uh, so through drops? Sparrow Racing League, everybody gets access to the Sparrow Racing League. If you own a copy of the Taken King, you get access to the Sparrow Racing League. However, if you spend $10, you can buy the Sparrow Racing Logbook, which allows you to complete bounties, essentially, and get better, cooler gear out of the Sparrow Racing League. You can get legendary gear out of just by racing, but you kind of get it guaranteed if you buy this $10 racing log. Also, there's oh. new emotes that you can only get if you purchase them. Uh, there's new, uh, there's all sorts of stuff like that, you know. And you have to, you can buy sparrows now uh, that are, you know, pretty exclusive, pretty, pretty cool looking. Frankly, there's one called the Jade Rabbit, which, you know, I need. <laughs> um, <laughs> it just, it it's, just it's a very different model than what we saw in year one, and people are really upset about it. There is a benefit to it, though, you know, that the community isn't isn't segmented and fragmented. Right. Every, yeah. When Dark Below came out, there were a lot of people who had Destiny. You know, maybe you got Destiny for Christmas, and then you put it in your in your PlayStation, right? And you went to boot it up and you say, oh, you need the Dark Below to play the newest raid. Or all my friends who have had Destiny since September are now playing the Dark Below content, but I don't have the Dark Below content. I just got Destiny for Christmas. And there, I'm already left behind. Like mm, That's yeah. the kind of stuff we'll avoid with this new model. People don't like microtransactions, though. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's a divisive issue. They're very controversial, and the thing is, we don't know how it's going to be with Destiny 2 when it launches next year, whether they'll go down the expansion route or they'll do these free updates, but I think this is a great thing. Like, I think this gives people a lot of opportunities to try these different events, and even if they're smaller little chunks of content more spread evenly, I think that's awesome. I'm glad they're uh, trying something different. I want I want big content, though, too. I want that. I want yeah. new raids. I want a new raid three times a year. You'll get that with Destiny 2 when that comes out. I don't want to wait that long. You're going to have to, prior to I don't want to, and I, I'm hoping that you're wrong, Robbie. I really am, because last year we got The Dark Below. We are we got that in December, and then we got House of Wolves. I want big content throughout the year. I do not want to wait for, for a whole year for the next raid or the next you know story release in Destiny. It's too long. What, That's true. Are we supposed to be a 320 light for a whole year? You know, I want to. I want to be. I want to have something to work toward. I want to have progression. I want to have stuff to do in Destiny. If they don't provide that, and the division comes out in February, hmm, what's going to happen then? Hmm, time to step on. All right. Yeah. All right. So continuing on with this plethora of virtual reality that we've been seeing lately, yeah. HTC's Vive VR headset has been delayed till 2016. Okay. They've been saying for a while now that it's coming out this holiday, and then this holiday came out, they basically didn't say anything, but the device hasn't been released. So basically, they silently announced that it's been delayed. But i got to tell you guys, I am super excited for VR. Like, a month or two ago, I did not really care. I didn't understand it. I didn't think it was going to be much, but holy Jesus, I'm actually excited for virtual reality now. The possibilities are incredible. I've watched a lot more and learned a lot more about what it is, and I really can't wait. This VR thing is the technology is there and the craze is just starting. Yeah, well, even though PSX kind of turned me off from it because of the way they tried to convey it, the way yeah, they tried the, the way they tried to show it was very underwhelming. But you know, understanding that you're not you're not really getting the full experience by watching a screen, it you kind of give them a little bit of slack. But um, I'm really excited about it too. I think it's since we were kids, and I'm talking to people my age, probably you, yourself too, Robbie. Uh, Briar, since we were kids, the one thing that we've always wanted 
whether we knew it or not, was a virtual reality gaming experience. To, to, be, to be able to walk into a gaming world, look around, and actually be there. To me, that was the the perfect representation of, of what the evolution of gaming was for me in my mind. To have a game that you genuinely love, like Destiny, can you imagine if you put on a headset and you're actually in Destiny, and it looks the way it does now, but you can move around with your controller, but of course you're able to articulate your head movement by looking around in that world. Could you imagine that feeling? To me, VR isn't a gimmick. That was a video I think I did yesterday. It isn't a gimmick. Uh, I think that it truly is the progression of what gaming is. And once they actually nail it, because it appears that everybody's doing it. Yeah. Everybody right now seems like they're on the same path when it comes to VR. Uh, and it's like they all know. It's like they all read from the same playbook. It's something, this is going to be a big thing. So I'm super excited about it. You know, uh, we got 2016, I think, is going to be a big year for everybody in the VR space. So, Well, it's, I've talked to a couple of guys who got to try out the uh, – the PlayStation one at the uh, PlayStation Experience last week, and mm-hmm. they said the thing is awesome. Like it's yeah. really good. They got to try out a few games. They had demos there. Uh, they they said they played a racing game, and like the best thing about it is you're driving in the racing game, and you can look at where you're about to go. You can yeah. look at your corner. Like that it's something so that cool. like has never been available in games before, yeah. <laughs> and like it's so essential to actual driving. <laughs> like it's, it's gonna it's, be. They said there was there's like an office simulator where you like go to work. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I saw that. Shit, right, but like they said, it was foot tall giant robot golf. Yeah, it's comfortable. It mm-hmm. looks great. It's got very little lag input, so it, like when you move your head around, it it's instantaneous. Yeah. They weren't getting sick on it, and one of the guys says he's had motion sickness problems in the past. Like I am really excited. This technology seems like it's matured to the point where it's ready. And I can't wait to get my hands oh, on it. It does seem like it's ready, absolutely. And the more I hear about it, the more I see a lot of these people are so excited about it who've tried it. Like, this is the real thing. This is the next step. I'm starting to believe it more and more, and I'm starting to become a believer in VR. Now I just got to try it, and I cannot wait. The one Who's thing, on? one thing though, is I've yet to see that killer app that's going to sell it. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, I haven't seen it. I we haven't seen it. it. I, I mean, you can put game. Gran Turismo out that supports it. And that will, you know, that I'll play that, and I'll be excited for that. That'll get me back into Gran Turismo, I guarantee you. Uh, but I have not seen that one app yet that says, "Oh, you have to get VR because of this game." Well, fr- from the look of the technology, Briar, that I've seen, especially PSX, they they showed a lot of uh, PlayStation VR stuff. We're gonna have to take a step back, maybe two generations, as far as graphics. That's okay. I, I, That's okay. I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine with it too. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the graphics of these games look uh, PS2 quality, you know, of course, 1080p resolution, but you got big polygons, big pixels everywhere. Yeah. Uh, well, polygons, the speed pixels. of the gameplay is going to take a step back, too. You're not going to be you're not going to be Black Ops 3, you know, jumping around, bouncing off of walls. Well, believe They're going to plant not. you back down. You're going to move slow, and <laughs> you're going to, like, yeah. it's going to be... Because they, they are really worried about getting people sick in these things, and they're going to try and find that limit as people... As people adjust to using them, I think that limit will get further and further out. But at first, they're being very careful. Believe Absolutely. it or not, a lot of the demos that they show were uh, running at uh, 60 frames per second, too. So I was like, wow, you know, this is almost a, a real-time type of experience, and that's going to really make or break a VR experience as yeah. well. If you got 30 frames, a little bit laggy. 60 frames, you can actually run around, and it's almost like really being there. One thing that people were saying is that in some games where they're playing VR and they look down and they were like on a building, they got you know, kind of a vertigo experience, feel like they're really going to fall and, and smash and die. So to me, that's really awesome. I'm super excited about it. Um, and I'm, I'm willing to actually pay big bucks for this, believe it or not, guys. I'm willing to pay uh, yeah. a high premium for, for a quality product. I'd rather spend 400 bucks, you know, on, on a, building a PC, to be honest with you. For, for this? Yeah. For Oculus? I mean, it's one, well, it's one of the big reasons. Well, smart, you're a smart man. All right, guys, so we're running out of time, so I want to continue to move on. Uh, Crystal Pepsi is coming back next year to store shelves. Finally, <laughs> finally. Not since they announced New Coke have I been so excited for a single drink product. This is new drink technology. Well, it's, it's refreshing, brought back from the 90s, finally. That's all I can say. Oh About God. fucking time. I'm excited to try it. I've never drank this because it's was blue coming next. Before it was born. Yeah, it so. t- tastes like if you squeezed your armpit sweat into a bucket of assholes. <laughs> 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 I am not excited to try this now. <laughs> Robbie, don't go to the store shelves when they come out. You can make your own today. 
I don't know where you're gonna find a bucket of assholes. It's crystal Pepsi that bad. I've never had it. I've never had it. Oh. <laughs> I've had it before, man. It's it's it's, it's something different. It this podcast is before. brought to you by Coke because Pepsi sucks. <laughs> Pepsi. <laughs> This podcast is brought to you by Coke because Pepsi tastes like bag of dicks. <laughs> yeah. We'd rather have our bag of assholes flavor today. Okay. <laughs> oh, shit. Let me try to get my composure. EA announces brand new competitive esports division led by company uh, COO Peter Moore. So we whatever. got esports and it's becoming real. Yay. Whatever. For yeah, whatever. You can't it's make me. these things happen. We all know that. You can't force this stuff. <laughs> Sorry, don't care. Moving happen. on. Moving on. Okay. I don't know. What do you guys think? What do you? I mean, that's my opinion. What do you guys think? So oh, here's I, the thing. A lot of people will instantly hate on this because it's EA, and they think there's gonna something go wrong with this. I mean, here's what I'll say: esports is becoming a bigger and bigger thing every year. Like a lot of people watch esports. It's actually a pretty big deal now. Like it's getting more and more mainstream as time goes on. And I think this could be really good. Like I know that. Activision has their Call of Duty World League that they're supporting themselves and they funded, and that's been really good so far with Black Ops 3. So, I mean, I think this could be great with Battlefield. and. Maybe so here's the problem, right, is I agree with you. I would like to see uh, – well, I don't know how to put this exactly because I'm not – I haven't thought about it that much, but every time I see a company try and promote their game as an eSports type game, it always seems forced and it never works, right? The, that's the true. community has to tell you – we like this game. We like how it plays. We're going to make this like this. It's got to be organic. It's got to start with the community. It can't start from the top mm-hmm. down. It starts from the bottom up. Uh, so yeah, if, if you can not, figure a way to tap into, like if they start seeing, like, okay, you know, Battlefield 5 got a little bit of an esports vibe going on. Yeah. Maybe we'll start, you know, the next DLC will start to, like, you know, put some features in that they're asking for uh, and start helping that way. I don't know what EA is planning on doing. I didn't read this whole article, I'll be honest with you. So it may be that. I'm completely off base here, but usually when I see companies saying we're we're really focusing on esports, it completely misses the mark. I, I gotta agree with you, Briar. I think that in order for a game to be an, a successful game in esports, the desire for people to play it on a competitive level has to be there first before the company just says play it competitively. You know, people have to actually want to do it, and uh, yeah. you're absolutely right there. I agree. All right, so uh, Nintendo files patent for handheld with freeform displays. Play, play. What do you There's a picture about? here. I will uh, open this yeah. up. Let's see the picture. Okay, just picture give me a second. Just picture page. It's time to play with picture page. It's time to get your crayons <laughs> and pencils. Brian, this is getting real weird. Stop <laughs> it. <laughs> Baby. All right, there we go. That's the picture. Can you guys see that? Yeah. So basically the idea is I think... Uh, the the idea is there's not going to be any buttons on this device. What freeform display means is it's a touch screen, oh, and yeah. there are different buttons built into it based on different games. So basically, developers can kind of input their own controls for every single game, which no. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this. I don't like touch screens. I don't like gaming on my iPhone. Very few times. I don't want to play Mario on my iPhone. I'll, I don't mind playing something like Monument Valley on my iPhone, which was built with that in mind. So if Nintendo starts developing games with this kind of thing in mind... That may be okay, but I'd rather have a D-pad on my gaming console. Now, this yeah. might be for their new uh, partnership with DNA. They may be wanting to port some of their Android type of games, iOS games, to this type of device. But when it comes to a, a mobile gaming platform, for me, it has to have some type of tactile control. You have to be able to touch it. You have to be able to feel it roll around and move under your thumbs. The, you can't really articulate real movement on a screen. At least I've never seen a technology that allows that. You know, uh, whenever I play a touch a touch screen game, it's either a game that you touch, you click to go here, you click to go here, I can do that. But if you're moving around, you're trying to control the speed of a, a character on the screen, it doesn't translate well to a touch screen, and that's kind of disappointing for me. Yeah. So one of the things we should mention, though, is that this is a patent. So what that means, basically, when a company files a patent is for a uh, device or a piece of technology is it doesn't guarantee that this is going to become a real thing. This is just so they have the rights to use this technology if they want to in the future. So this doesn't necessarily mean the handheld hybrid part of the console will be this, and there's, like, these little shoulder buttons here, too, but there's a possibility. Yeah, we'll have to see. I, I, you know... 
no judgment until they announce this thing. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what Nintendo's got up their sleeves. I'm hoping that it's going to be a real step forward for Nintendo. Uh, uh, you know, if, if it's a hybrid between a, a home console and a handheld device, I would really be excited. I think a lot rides not just on the hardware, but on how they do, how they deal with their legacy back catalog. The titles. Yeah. I think this is their last chance with the, the in the console space. If they don't get this one right, I think they're probably going to become a third-party game manufacturer. They're going to go so. Sega. I think there's I a think lot so. now. Well, Nintendo and Sega are a little bit different when it comes to finances. Uh, so I don't think that's going to happen. I think they can definitely they can afford to fail at least another time. You know, uh, they're they're changing uh, management right now. They're they're changing a lot of the infrastructure. In Nintendo, the way things are running. So I, I give them the benefit of the doubt. Hopefully that this new NX idea comes out and is successful because I want it to be. I, I want like it to be better. successful too. I liked it better when it was the big three and not just the big two on Nintendo. I do, I agree. You know, yeah. The big the big three that was always bam. You know, ever since PlayStation and Xbox the originals came out, Nintendo was there fighting alongside them, and now Nintendo's kind of falling back. Went to sleep and ate a sandwich, and they need to wake up and get back into the game. They can definitely come back, but I feel like if they don't succeed with this console, like people are going to lose faith in them for console hardware. That's just what I mean. They're not <laughs> totally done, but I don't know if they have another chance they can come back. You know what I really want is Mario Maker on the 3DS or maybe yeah. on this new con- like oh. new handheld. I think Mario Maker on a handheld would be such a great great I'm thing. I'm surprised it didn't do that. I'm so I surprised am too. It. Like I, because... I really think it's awesome having it on the on the Wii. Wii. The Wii U, but I, I think it would be a great game to have on a portable version as well, especially with the stylus, you know? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, so, guys, we're going to go through the best-selling games for the month of November. Nice. Some, some of you guys might be a little bit surprised by these numbers, considering some of the AAA titles that were released last month. Last month, Robbie, why don't you uh, hit us off with that list, baby, baby? Yeah, no problem. So I have a list here of the top 10 selling games for the month of November, and it also goes in order of what platform it's sold best on as well. So the number one selling game of number one, damn it, I'm getting mixed up, of November was Black Ops 3. Black Ops 3. Most oh, surprisingly, yeah. it sold best on the Xbox One over the PS4. I'm surprised by that because of the well, uh, deal with Sony. I'm not well, surprised. I mean, just because that, that's a new deal, and a lot of people, a lot of Call of Duty Hardcore. players... Hardcore community, a lot of them are on Xbox. And a lot of them are pissed off that that transition is being made over to Sony. Uh, But they have Xboxes. They've been playing on the 360. They bought an Xbox One for Call of Duty. They're going to keep playing it. Yeah. I feel like over the next couple of years, if they keep this exclusivity, you'll slowly see Call of Duty players transition to PlayStation. But it's going to be uh, gradual. Right now, PlayStation's a place to be if you're a shooter player. Yeah, Yeah. it definitely is. is. Okay, number two was Fallout 4, PS4, Xbox One, PC in order. That's how well it sold. Not surprising there. Star Wars Battlefront came in third place, PS4, Xbox One, PC. Madden NFL 16 sold best on PS4, NBA on PS4, FIFA 16 on PS4. I don't care about any of those games. Need for Speed sold better on PS4 than Xbox One. At number eight was Halo 5 Guardians. Number nine is Assassin's Creed Syndicate, PS4, Xbox One, PC. Just Dance 2016 came out uh, in tenth Sold best on the Wii, which is weird. <laughs> Way to go, Nintendo. Weird. <laughs> now, now the, the one thing that, that is kind of a, a shining elephant in the room for me there was that Rise of the Tomb Raider didn't crack the top ten. Uh, yeah, that sucks. That's really an unfortunate thing. Um, and a lot of people are speculating that it didn't because it only came out on the Xbox One, the Xbox 360. They but, only sold something like 300,000 copies in the first week, which is cool. It also came out yeah. late in November. Mm-hmm. Well, so. That and they also came out against Fallout 4, which was a very oh, dumb decision. Worst decision ever. <laughs> yes, there you go. Say it again, Briar. We it. all saw it from a mile away. That was a Seriously, horrible idea. Everybody, any idiot who saw a release calendar saw Fallout oh, 4. That, that game's coming out the same day Fallout 4? What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> you the, dummies. <laughs> the, way I, the way I feel about that, whoever made that decision, they need to have some form of reprimand because you could have literally went against Halo 5, you could have went against Call of Duty Black Ops, you could have went against Star Wars, you could have went, went against any of these games, but you chose the juggernaut of all of them, Fallout, and to come out the exact same day. How about a January or February release? Yeah, that, it would have <laughs> sold, sold phenomenally well, but they yeah. kind of stabbed themselves in the foot with a decision like that. They chopped off their foot, and then they gutted themselves, and then they, I mean, they scalped themselves and cut off their yeah. ears. <laughs> like, I'm going to get you sucker all over again. You ever seen what? Bone Tomahawk? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying. 
Uh, yeah, man, it's it's really a, a bad call that was made there, um, and, and it's really rough now because more than likely the game will probably sell better on the competition when it comes out. They could have just been selling them off a chuckle too because uh, Microsoft bought exclusivity for that, and it sells better on their console. They're gonna laugh at that. Somebody <laughs> needs to, somebody needs to be reprimanded for that for that uh, decision. It was a very poor choice. But moving on, Gearbox Software has opened a new studio in Quebec, Canada. That's right Woo! down the street from you, isn't it, Robbie? No, other side of Canada for me, but close. <laughs> <laughs> At least it's in the, the same uh, place, Canada. All right. Sure. All right. <laughs> no, we got a lot of land here. I know a guy from Canada. You don't you know that guy? <laughs> yeah, he's pretty cool, man. Loves maple syrup. Hey, new uh, new studio is always a good thing. I think we got to wrap this one up, guys. Yeah, we'll before, keep going we for do, a while before, before we do, before we do, I want to ask you guys. Uh, about uh, something that happened at the Game Awards, and get your honest opinion on it. Uh, I know what this is. It's about Metal Gear Solid Five. Uh, they won. What award was it? Action adventure, uh, action game. I think best action game. Most confusing oh. plot. Beast is frozen. Beast is frozen. Look at that. He looks good though. Look at that image. Frozen man. in time. That is solid. Oh, He's frozen, frozen in time. Oh shit! Yeah. Where do we go now? <laughs> I don't know. I, I gotta wrap up the show though. I got I gotta be with my family here. So are we just ending it? Is this an awkward ending? <laughs> it is an awkward ending. Beast is just gone. I don't I don't know what his uh, question was gonna be. Yeah, I do. To be oh, honest, okay. what is it? Quickly? Okay, it's basically about Kojima and him not being allowed to be there for the Game Awards. Did you hear about this? That cannot be yeah. banned him from there. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. That's ridiculous. Konami has proven time and time again that they are just the worst corporate scumbags that exist in the gaming industry. Like, I cannot believe the disrespect they have for Kojima. That's just... It's like, it's like he slept with somebody's wife and, like, the CEO's wife or something. Like, like what it's happened? Like, we have it no seems idea. personal, doesn't it? Something serious happened between these two. Like, not allowing him to go to these this event, accept his award. Like, I think that's horrible. I mean, something huge must have happened between them. Like, something really, really bad. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I don't either. But, I mean, Konami's been in the news being assholes for a long time here. Yeah. Hashtag fuck Konami. It's all over Twitter. <laughs> Hashtag That's bring Hammers back. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. We got to end this one. Uh, I wish Beastly would get back on here, but it doesn't look like he's going to be able to. But he was here for the most of the show. So you got 99% Beastly on the Beastly Thought Show. Yeah, hopefully that's enough for you guys. I'm sorry if we could get the extra 1%. Please don't give this video a dislike. We did a good job. If not, tune in next week for more Beastly. Mm, more Beastly Gamer. <laughs> and more Black Gamer. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Robbie, you got anything you want to uh, pimp out for next week? Not really. I might be Just releasing plug. a video this week uh, reviewing 2015 and sort of talking about the year ahead because we were originally going to talk about our favorite games of the year, but we could probably do that next week, so it's all good. But okay. I might have a video coming out. All right, sounds good. Uh, I'll be playing more Destiny. Looking forward to raiding with some viewers and live stream on Twitch. Uh, and that's going to be it. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next week. Bye, everybody.